Good evening, everyone. Thank you once again for joining me in my weekly book reading of the teeth that stole my time. So today, I wanted to share with you from a topic called The Prison of Guilt and Shame. In the past, we would have shared on regret, guilt, and shame that came from a chapter called Detox My Soul. But this portion is coming from a chapter called Deliverance from Bondage, because I think that guilt and shame is, 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 is something that keeps each of us in prison. It keeps us in a corner, and today we want to address that. So, um, here we go. Guilt and shame are closely related, as they are both feelings caused by, by the consciousness of wrong behavior. Guilt is related to some specific harm caused whether it was real or perceived. Shame involves negative feelings about oneself, whether or not they were responsible. Victims of child abuse usually carry shame with them through their lives, even, even though they were not responsible for what happened to them. In my life, she, guilt and shame were two emotions that dominated my life and kept me paralyzed in many areas, especially in my younger years. I was ashamed for many things that happened in my life that I was helpless to control, yet I carried the shame. It affected my self-esteem and my relationship significantly. It affected my ability to be vulnerable and allow intimacy in my relationships. Consequently, many relationships were short-lived. As I continued to live, I went on to make poor decisions on my own that brought me even more shame. Shame had me handcuffed and imprisoned. I could not boldly step out in the authority that was mine because my shame held me hostage. As far back as I could remember, as a church-going little girl, I remember the emotion of guilt. I remember always feeling guilty and not being able to measure up to the person the preacher said I was supposed to be. I tried and I tried, and I constantly failed and would end up drowning in the guilt of my failure. Some decisions were made for me that I had carried the guilt for situations that I was helpless to control. Guilt benefited me in some cases where it drove me to make good decisions. However, it did more damage than good in its entirety. Guilt left me paralyzed and self-loading. Guilt trips used on me was very effective, so I became an easy prey to the seasoned manipulator. The manipulator just needed to say a sentence to affect my behavior and to put me in an emotional prison. I was helpless to think myself out of the situation, but instead I was under a spell of their influence. I needed deliverance. Years after accepting his salvation call, I received a revelation of the depth of his love. Yes, I experienced the level of his love in my early walk with him but it was after we walked through the fire and the storm and I watched him love me through my failures. I watched him hold me in his strong, loving arms when I wanted to fall to the ground. I watched him shelter, shelter me when I was helpless to cover myself. I watched his strength at work when my weakness abounded. More than all else, I watched him passionately love me when I couldn't even love him or myself. The revelation of the depth of his love was the only thing that was potent enough to deliver me from the guilt and shame. Oh, how perfect was that love. Such love truly conquers all. So, guilt and shame. Guilt and shame really is a prison. And I think that I, I've spoken about it in the past. And I don't want to sound like if I'm repeating myself, but it's, it's such a potent, a potent trick a potent weapon that the enemy uses against us because you see we were created with 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 a natural a natural moral compass as the world would put it so we know what is right from wrong and we know what we should be doing but still paul said the things that I want to do, I end up not doing. The things that I want to do, I find myself not doing. And the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing anyway. Because, oh, wretched man that I am. Because we were created. We were created. He's, David said, um, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So our natural, we went from, from Adam. Adam, when Adam fell, mankind fell. 
So we have this natural inclination to, to, to sin. We, 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 we do not want to sin, but we end up being drawn into, 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 into areas of sin. Sometimes it comes from our generation. Our generation, from our bloodline, we, we realize the sins of our fathers and our forefathers. We end up committing the same sins, same sins unknowingly, unknowingly. And even, even in our own decisions, we end up making wrong decisions when, when our intention, we, we, the very things we said I'm never going to do, we end up somehow doing because of our, of our mere sin nature, the, the natural sin nature that, that exists in us. And we want to do right and we know what is right, but we still somehow end up doing wrong. And the devil is such a schemer. He's, 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 he's a tempter and an accuser. So he'll come and say, um, why don't you do this? And then when you do it, he'll come and when you do it and you end up in a place of a conviction and you end up in a place where you feel so bad about yourself, he, co he comes, he, he again comes back to you and say, look at what you do. Look at what you do. Look at where he is. You should have never do that. But he was the same one that tempted you to begin with. And that, that very voice keeps us in a place of, 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 of condemnation. And the Bible said that he came to he came and he paid the ultimate price for sin and guilt and shame and condemnation and and we were set free and we were not set free by what we did we our moral compass tells us we should do this and we shouldn't do this and sometimes we end up doing the wrong things and that same compass makes us feel bad about what we did and it's okay to feel bad about what you did to the point that you're making a decision to make changes but when that that feeling of guilt and shame just keeps you in a corner and backs you and pushes you in a corner where you feel you can't move and you can't do anything and you can't get anything right then it is it is it is it it, it, it doesn't work to, to bring benefit to your life and the bible said that he paid the ultimate price for your sin and shame and you no longer have to live in a prison because of something that you did in the past that you can't go back in time and change you can't change it god has already he went on calvary and he stretched his arm wide and he hung high on that cross so that you could be free and you could walk in freedom and you could walk in the fullness of that ultimate price mercy stepped in and paid the price for every sin that you ever committed and every sin that you will commit mercy already paid the price for that you judgment reigns over mercy the bible says that judgment reigns i mean mercy reigns over judgment and mercy has paid the price for you calvary paid the price for you when you do not accept the price when you do not accept the price that, you, that, 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 that Jesus paid on Calvary's cross, you made that, that, that work. You made that, that work that he did on Calvary's cross of no effect. And imagine he stretched high and hung high for you on that cross. And, and, and you do not receive the gift, the gift of salvation and the gift that he gave to you. Then, then he did it in vain. And I want you to know that he did not. He loved you so much that he paid a price for you to come out from that hole. All you need to do is accept him and choose him as your Lord and Savior. Because he is, he, 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 he did it from, from, from the depth of his heart. And I remember in, in seasons in my life that I tried to do it right on my own. And there were times that I felt so helpless that I couldn't even love him or I couldn't even, I was walking, I was living, I was a Christian, I was sold out, I was, I was, everything was unto God. But there were seasons when I feel like I did not even know, I did not even have that love to, to, to pour out. I did not know how to love him. I did not know how to love myself. I did not know anything but his mercy covered me his mercy sheltered me he loved me when i was the most unlovable he loved me when i didn't even know how to love myself or my brethren but he continued to love me he loved me beyond measure he showed me what it meant he, what 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 sacrifice meant he showed me what what it meant to to, to 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 love me when when i was the most unlovable and he loved me through the fire you, you, sometimes we say that 
we could we, we we say that we love people and we say that we love and 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 this is who we are but you can never you're not anything until that thing has been tested you can't say you're faithful until your faithfulness have been tested you can't say you're committed until your commitment has been tested you can't say that that you love until that love has been tested and it could only be tested through the fire it could only be tested through the trials it could only be tested when it has passed the test of time and it has passed through the 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 the, the, the raging storm and the burning flame and everything when when you could walk through those places and still come out then you could see that I, I really love and I saw him walk me through the fire and walk me through the storms and walk me through my weaknesses and walk me through my my places where I couldn't even love myself and loved me through it all and I uh, I know that his love is true and his love is faithful and his love is pure and his love is unchangeable and if you know that you will know that no matter what you did his love could cover everything his love could cover the worst of your sins his love could his love is so perfect his love is so pure his love would, would just would just take it all no matter what you did he said i paid the price there because he knows that you cannot do this on your own you cannot live this life on your own you cannot you cannot finish this walk on your own but if you if you accept the finished work of, of the cross if you accept what he did for you he will he will take you through the journey the journey would not be easy but he will walk you through the journey and he will show you that that he came that you might have life life real life not life in a prison not life in a prison but real life life and have it in abundance and that is my word for you and i pray that it bless you i just want to leave you with a word of prayer father i come before you with thanksgiving i thank you for this day dear god i thank you for the opportunity dear god to share this word with your children dear god father i ask you to continue to let this word reach exactly who it needs to reach dear god holy ghost i pray dear god that you you send it to the right home dear god you send it to the to the right listener dear god even that person who didn't even plan to listen dear god that they would click on it dear god and it would bring life back to their dead spirit dear god that it would it would it would revive them again dear god and it would it would cause them to 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 understand who you are and how much you love them dear god i pray that the love of god that that is shed abroad would reach your sons and daughters today dear god and i pray that it will deliver them from every corner i call them out of their corners dear god i call them out of their their corners i pray that every place that the, the devil has pushed them in a corner dear god i call them out dear god i pray dear god that, that every prison bar dear god must be shattered and broken today dear God, I refuse, dear God, to, to, to let your children stay in a corner when your word came to set them free, dear God. Father, use me as a vessel, dear God, that would set them free, dear God, that would set captives free today, dear God. Holy Ghost, I pray that everywhere that this word reaches, dear God, that you set captives free, that you set captives free, that you set captives free, dear God, and you deliver them from bondage, dear God. Holy Ghost, I, I submit this word into your hands, dear God. I pray, dear God, that every single listener, dear God, that it reaches, dear God, that your voice goes into that place, dear God, and, 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 and your word goes into that place, dear God, and, and sets them free, dear God. Father, we know that love covers a multitude of sin, dear God, and let your love reach them, dear God, and cover all their sins, dear God, and let them see how perfect you are. Let them see how perfect your love is. Let them see how, how unmatched your love is, dear God, and Holy Ghost, you set them I'm free today dear god i i commit this video into your hands and i ask and i ask you to, to have your divine way in the mighty name of jesus we pray thank you once again for listening to this video i ask you to like comment and share this video on our instagram and facebook page and subscribe to our youtube channel don't forget to get the book the teeth that stole my time it's available on it's available on Amazon and all Araki and Muhammad's bookstores. Thank you once again for listening. Join us again next week. Bye.